this video is going to define market research as well as the marketing research process. So what is marketing research? What is this course all about? Well, according to the American Marketing Association, marketing research is the function that links the consumer, customer, public, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it, uh, to marketer through information. Okay, so the, the, the way to think about this is, you know, the, the marketer has to make certain decisions, and those decisions ought to be informed by what's going on out in the marketplace. So how, how does the, the marketer get information about what's going on in, in the marketplace? The answer is marketing research. So marketing research is this, um, is this business intelligence that's gonna, gonna help me understand, me the marketer, um, what's going on out in culture with my consumers uh, and so forth. One of the basic tenets of IMC that, that our most famous professor Don Schultz always um, really emphasizes with students is what he calls the difference between inside out and outside in marketing. So inside out marketing is where the firm uh, does stuff uh, and throws it out and hopes that the consumer buys it. All right. Um, outside in, which is which is the good approach, is where the marketer uh, understands the consumer. The marketer starts with with understanding uh, the prospective consumer, and then uses that um, to inform what what uh, what is done. I'm not sure if this story is true, but I heard that way back in the 1970s, Don was um, visiting one of the uh, automotive American automotive factories, and. Uh, he was doing some consulting up there and and being given a tour of of the of the grounds and so they had him a little, on a little golf cart taking him from building to building and they were driving through one of the big uh, one of the big lots where where they were storing what they just produced and Don remarked to the, the person who was taking him around uh, gee you have a lot of green cars out here on this lot what you know why, why do you have so many green cars out here and the response was, well, you know, consumers just aren't buying green cars this year, so we got all these green cars sitting around, uh, no, no one's going to buy them. And Don uh, then asked, well, why did you produce so many cars with, uh, with green color then? And the response was, well, we have green paint. We had green paint. So uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a classic illustration of inside-out thinking. The company produces something, throws it out there, and expects consumers to buy it. And that's, that's a very uh, bad way to think about it. Now, there's, there's, um, it's kind of a, an almost blatant example of inside-out thinking, but it's, uh, it's extremely easy to, to find uh, any number of, of incarnations of this inside-out thinking. The company just makes some decisions, throws it out there, hopes consumers bite. So, the the alternative to this, which uh, w which again is one of these basic tenets, is outside in thinking, where the market researcher goes out and tries to understand uh, consumer wants and needs, and then put together um, a product and the rest of the, the, uh, the marketing mix to meet those needs. All right. And that's where marketing research comes in. So market research is providing that link between the consumers and the marketing organization. Let's move on. So information uh, is used to do to, to inform all marketing activities, from uh, defining opportunities, identifying problems, generating, refining, and evaluating marketing courses of action. So setting the marketing mix. As well as monitoring, uh, you know what's going on, the performance of, of your programs. So market research specifies the uh, information required to address these issues, designs the method for getting the information. So it's about specifying what's necessary, designing the methods to, to gather it, 
um, then going out and actually doing the, the gathering. Uh, once you've gathered the data, you've got to analyze it. Um, once you've analyzed it, you've got, to, you've got to craft a story around that and communicate that to your various um, audiences as well as communicating those implications. So, so that's what this course and the second half of this course, which you'll be taking later on in the curriculum, is all about. Let me now show you a, um, the IMC process. So you will take a course called the IMC process in a couple quarters, and it, it roughly covers this. So th this is how we do marketing uh, with the IMC approach. So a few things that, that um, are noteworthy. First off, customers are in the center of this process. It's, it's, normally you, you talk to MBAs and what's the objective of, of a business? Well, it's to increase shareholder value. So they're going to put shareholders above, above all over stakeholders. Um, at IMC, we put customers first because if, if we don't have a, a good understanding of customers, um, we're never going to be able to produce shareholder value. So, so everything has to start with, with customers. Now, the process that you're going to be learning about is, is as follows. You're going to understand consumers. You're going to be segmenting. You might be sub-segmenting them. And you're going to be trying to estimate their value. So customer value, what, what are they worth? After you've done this, you're going to set um, objectives for different segments and sub-segments of customers. Your customer valuation exercises are going to enable you to allocate marketing resources. You can set your spending levels. And once you've uh, set the objectives and figured out how much you can spend, then you're going to go off and create marketing interactions. So, you know, I guess in the olden days, we would have called these contact points or touch points. Uh, we've, we've moved away from that to more interactions, uh, acknowledging the fact that, that um, uh, you know, corporations are no longer in control, of, uh, in control of all of their messages and, and they must um, you know, have a dialogue with consumers about their brands. So this is all the stuff that, that, um, that happens between the, you know, the communications that are happening between the consumer and the firm. So advertising is, of course, part of this outbound uh, CRM activities like email and direct mail uh, is all part of this, as well as the rest of the marketing mix. So figuring out what, what you're going to be charging uh, for, for your product, uh, how you're going to distribute it, the product decisions itself, all of that falls into this, this bucket. Then you need to measure and evaluate uh, what happened as a consequence of this. So what, what outcomes uh, came about? Did you achieve the objectives? So these outcomes that you're trying to, to measure against come right from your objectives. So if you work for, um, if, if you're an advertiser, your clients are, are always asking me, prove to me that what you're doing is working. If you're working within an organization, the financial organ officers of the organization are going to say, well, you know what? what you know, pr proved to us that marketing's working well. This this last step is all about um, measuring and evaluating that. Okay, so that's that's what you're going to be learning here at IMC. So you had sort of the, the three minute version there of it. You'll have a whole course on this come um, uh, well wh wh whenever you take that class, and there'll be a number of electives that that go that take a deep dive into various aspects of this. So where does marketing research fit into this process? The answer is it fits in in a lot of places. So understanding consumers is fundamentally a market research task. You can't get to any of these contact points that, um, that you're going to be creating without having a, a solid understanding of what customers want, what they need, what they believe. You can't get to that without understanding what's, what's going on in the culture um, in which consumers are immersed. 
So we're going to have all sorts of methods for understanding uh, consumers. We can do surveys. We can do um, analyses of, of uh, social media. So what, what are they saying about our brands uh, and their needs in social media? We can do database analyses of, of what they've been purchasing. All of these are, are methods of understanding customers. Next thing, uh, segmentation. Segmentation is, uh, I suppose it's possible without marketing research, but um, it's usually best with market research. So you're going to be learning all about market segmentation in your marketing management class. Um, typically what's done uh, to produce a market, market segmentation is that there will be some sort of marketing research survey or some database analysis uh, and then we're going to apply a method called cluster analysis to uh, either that survey or that database to arrive at segments. In the IMC class you're going to be talking about subsegmentation, which again is going to be heavily reliant on data whether it's survey or database data. Valuing customers is also a marketing research task. We're going to be using customer databases uh, and surveys uh, and statistical models to estimate those, the, the value of them. In, uh, in a moment, I'm going to be talking about all the different ways that uh, marketing research informs the creation of contact points. So give me a second on that but market research plays a very large role here. Um, another critical role is in measurement. So in order for us to prove that what we have done as a marketer is causing the outcomes that we're, we're, we've set for ourselves and these objectives that our clients have, have set for us, we need... Uh, a marketing research design. So there's a broad class of designs known as causal designs. The purpose of a causal design is to get a cause and effect. Nail down cause and effect. So if I increase my advertising uh, uh, level, what happens to my sales? I want to be able to prove that sales go um, you know, up by a certain amount because, you know, the, the, and that's due to my change in advertising. Or if I change my price, what's going to happen? So that, again, that comes down to, um, to a, a causal design. That's what we're going to be covering in this class. Right. When it comes to things like the brand, market research is going to play uh, an absolutely critical role in helping us, uh, first off, come up with a brand concept uh, and position our brand relative to other brands in the category. So we're going to be studying methods in this two-course sequence in marketing research uh, for, for doing exactly that, understanding consumer beliefs, perceptions, which will get us to a brand concept, and also understanding how um, our brand is positioned in consumers' minds relative to the competitors. So my point with all of this is that marketing research it plays a role throughout the IMC process. This slide, uh, I, I should tell you, is, um, is a slide that has been in my course packet since I taught at Kellogg, and I, I guess it's a, it's a little bit more of a, a traditional uh, look at marketing. So the way MBAs think of marketing uh, is that, well, we're going to do segmentation, targeting, positioning. I've already mentioned how uh, market research will play a role in all of these these things. Uh, we've talked about how market research will tell us about the competitive environment uh, uh, and so forth. Let's talk a little bit more about the marketing mix or the marketing plan. So the marketing um, mix is, is made up of, uh, of orchestrating the things that are under the marketer's control. So th these would include things like the product, the price, the uh, way we promote ourselves. So that's where we, you get into advertising and, and other marketing communications as well as place, which, uh, which is you know, the, the distribution channels. 
I've also thrown service down here because customer service is really important in certain businesses. Now, all of these um, elements of the marketing mix are examples of touch points. So the price that I charge is going to say something about my product. If I set, it, set a high a premium price, that, that's going to have certain connotations to the consumer versus um, a very low price. And the very low price would, would connote something else to the consumer. All aspects of the product, including the packaging, are going to uh, uh, say something about who we want to be as a, as a product slash brand. What we say about ourselves and, and all of these uh, elements are touch points. Well, marketing research plays a critical role in all of these. Um, you know, from product design, we'll be studying methods called a method called conjoint analysis in the next course that uh, will help you in in designing a, the appropriate product for your target audience. Pricing decisions will. You, this is another thing you'll get next quarter when you study regression. You're going to be estimating demand curves using regression analysis, and that's going to help you um, understand what price you should be setting so that you can maximize your, your profitability. Uh, the whole process of creating a uh, promotional plan will also be informed by marketing research through survey data, um, analysis of social media, and so forth. So my point here is that marketing research plays a critical uh, role here, as well as in the evaluation and control. So all this stuff falls right out of the AMA's definition, um, listing all these things that you can do with marketing research. So on, on the, on the um, an example of evaluation and control, a big part of uh, marketing research is creating dashboards for monitoring what's going on. We might want to be monitoring customer satisfaction. We might want to be monitoring click-through rates. And so all of these are, are really, um, you know, it's, it's a marketing intelligence function that's absolutely critical to us. All right, let's uh, let's carry on in that definition. So if, if we go back to the definition one more time, we have, um, you know, here, here's basically what it is. Here's the role it plays within marketing. The last step uh, gives a pretty concrete definition of what it involves. So what it involves is a process. The marketing research process, uh, again, going back to the definition, begins by formulating the problem. So specifying what you want to get out of this research. Let me give you just a, a, a few words of advice on, on this now, and we're going to have some discussion about this in a little bit. So problem formation really starts with figuring out, I, I start with what decisions are you trying to make. So I need to make certain decisions about the positioning of my brand or certain decisions about the pricing of my brand. Now having identified what decision you're trying to make, the next step in formulating your problem is to ask yourself a very simple question. What information do I need to make that decision? So what, what critical pieces of information, what, what do I need to understand about my consumers in the marketplace in order to make that decision that I need to make? Now, once you've identified the gaps in your knowledge. So what, what, what do you need to know? How often this list of stuff that you need to know becomes quite long. Um, this is what, what I'd recommend doing is, is having a brainstorming session and just, just making a list of stuff that you don't know that you, you'd really like to know. The third step then is to prioritize. So of these things that I'd like to know, what do I really need to know in order to make that decision? So, so there's going to be some things that maybe you can make, a, you feel comfortable making an assumption about. 
other stuff that you really need to know. So this is, this involves a lot of thought, uh, sorting through um, what you'd like to know versus what you need to re you know really need to know. All right. So now once you've identified what you really need to know, then you're going to go off and and uh, execute some marketing research to, to get that information to make that decision. Okay, so that, that's what problem formulation involves. The next step then, once you've, once you've figured out, here are the key pieces of information that I need to know. I really need to know this if I'm going to make this decision. Then uh, you're going to go off and choose a design. Now there are three broad classes of marketing research designs covered in textbooks. So one is exploratory, second is descriptive, the third is causal. This course is not about exploratory research. You're, um, you're going to be taking a customer insight class. In fact, you're probably taking it right now, concurrently with this class. Uh, if not, you'll take it soon. That class uh, will teach you a lot more about exploratory research methods. So exploratory research methods involve uh, things like in-depth interviews, focus groups, literature reviews, uh, projective techniques, ethnographies, netnographies, and so forth. So you can have a whole class on that. This course and part two of this course will focus on descriptive and causal research. So that, that hopefully helps you position uh, wh where these courses sit. So descriptive research is all about measuring something. So uh, you know, there's some, some things that I need to measure. Descriptive research will give you estimates of that. Causal research, as I mentioned a minute ago, um, allows you to get at cause and effect. So if I do something, what happens? Having um, chosen one of these designs, or sometimes it's a combination of these designs, now you've got to go gather data. So data collection come in, in two different forms, primary and secondary. So primary data is where you go out and gather new data for the, the, uh, the, the research questions that you have. Secondary data is data that have been gathered already, and you're just making use of them to inform your decisions. So there's lots of examples of secondary data. So one example of secondary data would be if I have a transaction history. So think about what Amazon knows about its customers. You know, so Amazon knows um, when I've purchased, every item that I've purchased, every item I've browsed. They they keep sending me emails and they observe whether or not I delete them or uh, click on something in them. So they have a lot of information about me. They know how I like to get stuff delivered. They know who I send gifts to. All right, well, you know, a lot of that information is not gathered for marketing purposes. You know, it's gathered for, for, for fulfillment purposes, for... Um, for um, inventory uh, purposes, yet it has tremendous value to the marketer. So someone on Amazon, an analyst, can go in and analyze all of that transaction database, everything in their data warehouse, um, and know things about me, know things about customers like me, or uh, segments of customers like me, uh, and use that to inform their marketing uh, actions. So that's an example of secondary data. Another example is that there are a lot of companies that provide marketing research information. So um, many of you may have used data from Simmons or uh, Scarborough or uh, MRI. These are all firms that gather large amounts of, of consumer information. Simmons, for example, fields a survey of about 25,000 consumers every year and just asks them about all of the products that they buy, the media that they consume, their attitudes, their free time activities, their demographics, and then they, they sell this to advertisers and uh, advertising agencies 
so that these can make better media buying decisions, um, positioning decisions, and so forth. So that's another example of secondary data. Uh, the U.S. Census is another great example of a, of a data set um, that's used a lot by marketers from everything um, uh, for store locations, if you're a retailer, to what you put in stores. You care about the demographics of the stores, well, the, the census will tell you about the, the trading area. So there's another example of a secondary data set. Many examples of primary data collection, so maybe I, I can't get the secondary source, so I go field a survey. So fielding an original survey would be an example of primary data collection. Doing in-depth interviews as an exploratory research approach is also primary data collection. Um, running a field experiment. So if I'm trying to evaluate my in-store promotional campaigns and uh, you know, I, I do an experiment where certain stores have one promotion, in-store promotion campaign, the others have um, a different one. That's an example of primary data collection. It's original data collection. Okay, so primary is where you go out and gather fresh data for the task at hand. Secondary is where you use existing data, whether it's from the census or a syndicated market research firm, to inform your decisions. Another piece of this data collection a part that, that we, we will address in this class and in the second part of this class is questionnaire design. So if you have to create a survey, you need to write the questions and we'll talk about how to write good questions in this class, then you'll do it again next quarter as well. Not, well, in the next half of this class. Attitude measures measurement is a special part of um, questionnaire design, you'll get that in the second part of this course when you study a method called factor analysis um, and uh, coefficient alpha is, a, is also part of uh, attitude measurement. So that's an absolutely critical part in, in um, positioning your brand, um, coming up with the brand concept, you, you really need to measure consumer attitudes. It's also part of understanding consumers. So attitudes are an important part of, of, uh, of that. Uh, I'll mention one other thing about questionnaire design. If you do an in-depth interview, that involves creating a discussion guide. So that discussion guide is kind of like a questionnaire. Um, that's part of this step as well. Now that we've figured out, you know, we need some primary data or I can make use of secondary data, um, I've got my questions all set up. Now I need to think about sampling. So sampling comes up both with primary and secondary data. Uh, so what, what does sampling design me mean? Well, uh, I need to get a sampling frame first off. So sampling frame is the list of all people in my population that I care about. So I just need a list of names and then I'm going to select certain names from that, that sampling frame. I need to figure out how many names I need. So these are all questions ar around that sample design. Um, how am I going to pick those names? So one, one possibility is I just throw all the names in a hat and pull out um, 200 names at random, but that doesn't always work. So sample selection also involves other more complicated sampling designs. So um, we'll talk a little bit about cluster sampling, stratified sampling, snowball sampling. These are all different approaches that can be used uh, to get a, a sample. So now we've gotten, we've you know, designed our, our data collection approach. We've figured out our sample design. We go out and gather a bunch of data. Next step is to analyze it. So. We're going to spend a lot of time on descriptive and inferential statistics in this class. So these are things that we're going to be using to analyze descriptive and causal uh, studies. So how do, we, um, how do we summarize data? How do we summarize relationships between variables? And um, how do we draw conclusions from that? Now that we've analyzed the data, the last step is to write up a 
research report and present it to our clients. So this involves questions around how do you tell the story? How do you present your evidence in an effective manner so that your, um, your audience um, believes you? So you're, you're ultimately selling an idea and you want to bolster uh, your, your case by presenting evidence from, from marketing, the market research that you've done. So how do you do that in an effective manner? I add a step to this market research process that I call post-analysis. So post-analysis involves examining whether what you said would happen actually happened. So very often you're, you're, you're making a forecast or making a prescription and that forecast or prescription can then be evaluated later. So my favorite example of, of a post-analysis is election day. So up until election day, numerous polling organizations are trying to predict who's going to win. They're all making forecasts. So they're saying candidate X will receive a certain percentage of the votes. Well, on election day, we get the answer. And that, that answer enables us to sort through which, uh, which polling organizations know what they're doing and which ones don't. Now, if you're working at one of those polling organizations, it provides a, a really important opportunity for you to learn. You know, are, are your methods actually um, forecasting the elections correctly? And if they're not, what do you need to do to fix them? So, I used an election example there, but many, um, many situations arise in marketing where um, I'm trying to, I've got a new product, I want to forecast demand for that new product, so I use some market research, I get my estimate, um, estimate tells me to go ahead and launch it, I launch it, do I really, um, do I really achieve the market share or the number of, of consumers that, that my marketing research model told me I'd, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd accumulate. So, Again, um, don't think of marketing research as a one-off act, one activity. You do it once and, you, and you're done with it forever. It's not that way. Think of it as, as something that uh, gets repeated over time. You know, so often you're doing things, these things many times, therefore you want to hone the method um, for the idiosyncrasies of your organization. Make sure that you're getting stuff right. So that's the process. Um, Real quickly, we're going to spend a bit of time on these first two boxes today. Then we're going to take a deep dive into descriptive research. Descriptive research um, will, will require us to learn a lot about um, statistics. So we're going to talk about um, differential, descriptive and inferential statistics. Uh, the sample design comes into that. So we're going to spend quite a few weeks talking really about descriptive research as well as these two boxes, sample design and the um, data analysis piece. Come week, I guess six or seven, we're going to be talking about questionnaire design. We'll also do um, uh, an in-depth lecture on how sampling designs go, go wrong. Uh, we'll also be talking about how to present your findings in this class. So that, that's what we're doing here. One final uh, thing to, about market research. So we don't always have time for market research. Often there are, there are, there are instances where uh, we should not be doing market research. So here's a couple uh, questions that you should ask yourself, and if the answers to any of these questions are no, then don't do market research. If you answer yes to all of these, then do it. So do you have time to do it? Do you have, do you have, is the information already available? Is the nature of the decision of considerable strategic or tactical importance? If not, don't do it. 
And does the value of the research that you're going to gather exceed the cost of it? So sometimes you've got a critical question, but answering it is going to be so difficult and costly, you can't really go out and and do it, you know. So then you, you're going to have to use your best business judgment um, w w without the research. All right. So these are just some things to consider.